So this is a social transformation approaches, right? Personal transformation, changing dominant institutions and alternatives to the to your dominant institutions, right? And um, the other framework, just basically taming the system, smashing it, the system, or escaping the system, which I would imagine the escape is related to the alternatives, but not necessarily, right? Like you can have an alternative that's not like an escape plan, right? <laughs> like, so, um, like you, like, I, to me, escape would seem like maybe um, a counterculture or like um, trying to remove yourself from society or like a dual power kind of thing of like you're building stuff up to replace the system, you know? But mm -hmm. where, where do people, where do all of you kind of, what resonates with all of you? And I also don't think you have to do one and not the others. Like, I think you could do more than, you know, more than one of these at the same time, you know? What, what kind of, what um, approaches do you guys resonate with? So if I'm understanding correctly, I would say alternative. Uh, I don't want to just modify some of uh, the system, at least for the long term. And I think part, so, and, and definitely not escape um, because this stuff catches up with you. Um, I feel like that's one thing we've, I've learned about like the housing situation, um, like getting involved in the tenant union stuff is, and, and connecting with other tenant unions throughout the country. We're seeing like, this is not something we can escape really. Like people got to dig in and fight. Um, and, um, I guess there's this, there's this one quote out of the French revolution. I think, I don't know. I forget the person they, I wouldn't be surprised if they were a pretty terrible person as well. But I think they said like, it can't be like a halfway revolution or something. It's like, it's like all the way or mm -hmm. you just like end up in the grave. Um, and I do, it seems to me that that is, that that is what happens. If you look at, uh, these social transformations that if they don't go far enough, they, they quickly degenerate and then we end up in the same position we were in. Um, a lot of stuff that we're complaining about today, people were complaining about it a hundred years ago, even before that. Oh, yeah. So, so would you also resonate with the smashing if you're talking about revolution or? Um, where we can win. Yeah. If we can win, that'd be great. Uh, though I, I know that um it can't just be smashing and that you got to be very careful about that because uh i think a lot of systems they 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 get powerful by those types of attempts so you gotta be very very careful about how you try to do that mm -hmm. and they they you might think that you're the one who's doing the smashing but they you might actually be vicariously smashing for them in a way which they're, they're gonna get stronger Yeah, and I'll, I'll just mention on the, the tame smash escape uh, kind of uh, structure or way of thinking about this. There's Abe did a, an interview with um, uh, Francisco Perez and uh, Sarah Wong, I believe, from uh, at the Economics for Emancipation uh, course at the Center for Popular Democracy, I think, or something like that. Um, so, yeah, it, if you're interested in that, definitely take go give that a read um i you know so obviously these two kind of schemas don't really map onto each other one to one at all um the, you know personally i think especially with this one like we have to be pursuing all three of them at the same time and maybe not each of us individually i think each of us individually do need to be pursuing the personal transformation bit um of course we need to make sure that we don't fall into the old like oh you just change yourself and everybody focus on themselves but nonetheless i think there does need like we do need to transform ourselves personally we need to transform our values we need to change our values um 
you know, I did, was involved with um, like environmental and good government and uh, consumer uh, advocacy uh, in when I was in college um, uh, with Montperg, with the Montana Public Interest Research Group. And it was really interesting watching, you know, some when I joined as a freshman and I took a several extra time to go through get my bachelor's degree. So I got to see like kind of generations of leadership in that organization and, and, and just, you know, the, the people. And, you know, there were some people who they were all about it for a year or two, you know, but, you know, then they got there, they finished the law degree and then they got the, and then they became a corporate lawyer, you know, um, and so, and, you know, a lot of the, the things, if we want to actually talk about social transformation, there's going to like, there's going to be some sacrifices there, you know, <laughs> I think that it, that necessitates that like, okay, well, if we're actually trying to transform thing, that means we probably aren't just going to be living our lives in exactly the same way that everybody else who isn't trying to transform society does. Right. And, um, and so like getting over our, um, you know, uh, personal consumption lifestyles, you know, our materialist lifestyles that were just inculcated with from the day we're born. Um, uh, you know, I think our, our individualistic attitudes that we have to an extreme degree here in this country, you know, that kind of things we need to be working on. Um, in terms of the dominant institutions, like I'm not much of a, you know, let's just um, try to reform things like I don't put a whole lot of um faith in that as a as a sole strategy but I but definitely like there are times when it's like okay there's there's something that you know we need to change right now we can't get rid of the entire police force right now that's not within our thing that's not you know something we can do um but we need to do something and so you know there is kind of a need as, as uh, on, you know, I think sort of a, um, you know, emergency basis, almost, uh, you know, like a triage type basis, like, okay, we, we are good. We do like reform is something that needs to happen. And probably as a short-term solution, sometimes that's what we'll need to do. But really what we want is the alternatives ideally. Um, so I think all three of those have to go together in any kind of truly transformative uh, project and as for the tame smash and escape um you know i'm you know I, I think we're we're trying to escape the capitalist system to the greatest extent possible um and if you can't smash it i guess you have to tame it which is again more of a reformism thing um but you know i don't know that's where we get to like what chris is talking about with the tenant unions um and i did you know i ran a uh, staff the tenant landlord hotline for a couple of years so I got pretty familiar with that and and involved myself in some of the the legal side of it in terms of trying to change the laws tenant landlord laws in the state and just you know make some adjustments to them um and it's like yeah you it, we're not going to get rid of like private ownership of of property and, and rental properties and stuff like that so we have to be engaging in the fight where it's happening, which might be in the legislature, you know, someplace where we'd prefer not to be, but um, we're gonna have to do that. Anyway, rambling. But I do think that we get stuck, we do get hung up and I remember this a lot from, again, my college days of getting into arguments with people in the Environmental Action Committee or yeah, that's what it was called, EAC about you know, because we were more reformists, we were like, you know, going to the legislature and, and doing citizen initiatives and stuff like that. And they were hanging themselves off of logging trucks, you know, when they stopped at the stoplight so that they couldn't keep moving, stuff like that, direct action. Um, and our thing, and I still believe it, was always, you know, diversity of means. We need a diversity of means. We need you guys doing what you're doing. Um, but we also need people like us doing what we're doing, right? Like, it's not one way or the other. And I think it's the same way with this. You know, it's not that we just need people, you know, uh, trying to smash the system or, or, you know, it's like we need people doing all of it. What are your thoughts, Matt? What, what, what sits with you there? Um, I guess uh, 
I feel like the thing that I've found recently in the work I've been trying to do with folks is that the some of these discussions, how would I say, like people talk about different ideas of change or transformation, but the fundamental question is who's going to do this? And so the collective organizing piece is often just not front and center. So I think this is one of, the, I think the, the reason why I feel like working on regulations and changing policies, et cetera, feels so disempowering and so kind of like, you know, it's like a dead end is because by itself, it doesn't build people's collective capacity to do anything. And there's no, and if you focus all your effort there, you may not, it's not necessary, but it's quite possible that you won't put the effort into building autonomous collective power that you need to be able to do things, including to hold politicians accountable. Like it's, you, know, you can do a lot of different things, but all of them require uh, collective action. They all require, and if they're going to be democratic and et cetera, then they require some very intensive sort of collective organizing work. And that's hard work and it's work that people I think are unfamiliar with and don't necessarily want to do a lot of. And because it's just, you know, it's slow going and it's challenging. And one thing I like about cooperatives is that they, it's a very practical format where the co the collective activity is built in. Like it's about collective activity. And so you kind of, there's no avoiding it. And that's great. It gives people a chance to have that experience and build real power, even if it's on a very small scale or in a limited area, there's, the power does belong to the people who are doing it. That seems very important to me. Yeah, I, I wish that um, people saw like um, decision making in general, like in the workplace and in our housing as like political power, you know, beyond like political power just being, you know, the voting booth, you know, it, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that um, we make many more decisions, you know, in our workplaces and in our um, housing than we do, you know, in, in our voting, you know, um, and I, and I, and I do think there is potential, you know, for us to transform our political power by um, making more democratic societies. But I, um, but yeah, certainly getting people to think in those terms is, is something that's a, you know, continual work for us, you know? Um, but I do agree with Josh that like the three, um, you know, of like social, uh, personal transformation and um, alternatives and changing the dominant institutions have to happen at the same time. I do think that in terms of personal transformation, I don't know that I really resonate with the idea of like pay it forward, like, oh, if you do good and other people will do good kind of idea. But like, I do think that by working together democratically, we there is this kind of transpersonal aspect to it, right? doing something with other people beyond yourself that is by itself a little transformative but i do wish that we did a little less replication of dominant institutions within cooperatives and mutual aid and everything like that like our workplaces don't have to look like other workplaces we can do more personal transformation than doing another workplace but adding the democracy aspect you know like we can have you know, relationships with uh, with the people that we organize with that are um, more fulfilling than that, you know? Mm -hmm.